Warning, the following recording contains references to self-harm, suicide, sexual abuse, and homophobia. If these things trigger you, please, please, please do not listen any further. This episode is a doozy. Also, please keep in mind that this is for entertainment purposes only. This is not an endorsement of any of the things that I will be reading. <sighs> Seriously, buckle up. This one is nuts. On today's episode of My Immortal, will Albert Dumbledore be successful in his quest to become more gothic? Will Snap and Lupin get their revenge on Ebony? And will anyone really notice how truly intricate the narrator's gameplay of Out of the Park Baseball is? Seriously, he has a timeline and a pre-planned setup and everything. He's kind of a nerd. Two out of three of these questions will be answered on today's episode of My Immortal. Chapter 19 I'm not okay, I promise. Arthur's note. Pulls stop flaming da story. If u do or a folkin prep and er jealous, okay, one one. From knock on, im gong to dealt or men reviews, one one one. BTW. Ever need a poor blood, so der one. Fangs to Raven, 4M da help, one one. All day we sat angrily thinking about Dumbbell Door. Dumbbell Door. We were so fucking pissed off. Well, I had one thing to look forward to. The MCR concert. It had been postponed, so we could all go. Anyway, I went to the common room, sadly, to cut classes. Draco was being all secretive. I asked what it was, and he got all mad me and started crying all hot and angsty. Aren't sensitive by guys so hot? No one fucking understands me, one. He shouted angrily as his black hair went into his big blue eyes like Billy Joe in Boulevard of Borkin Dreams. He was wearing black baggy paints, a black MCR t-shirt, and a black dye. Get it instead of tie, cause im gothic. I was wearing a black leather low cut top with chains all over it. All over it. A black leather mini, black high held boots, and a cross belly thing. You used the word cross again. My hair was all up in a messy, really high bun, like Amy Lee in Gong Under. Email me if you wanna see the pic. Accuse me? What about me? I growled. Boy, but, but, he grunted. You fucking bastard, I moaned. No, wait, it's not what it fucking looks like, he shouted. But it was too late. I knew what I had heard. I ran into the bathroom angrily, cring. Draco banged on the door. I whipped and wept as my bloody eyeliner streamed down my cheeks and made cool tears down, down my feces. Made cool tears down my feces, like Benji in the video for Girls and Boys. Raven, that is so our video. I took out a cigarette and started to smoke pot. Suddenly, Hargrid came in. He had appearated. You gave me a fucking shock. I shouted angrily, dropping my pot. What the fuck do you think you're doing in the girls' room? Only it wasn't just Hargrid. 
Someone else was with him, too. For a second, I wanted it to be Tom Ridd, or maybe Draco, but it was Dumbledore. Hey, I need to ask you a question, he said, pulling out his black wannabe gothic purse. What are you wearing to the concert? You know who MCR are? I gasped. No, I just saw there was a concert that a lot of goths and punks were going to, he said. Anyway, Draco has a surprise for you. All right, notes for uh, chapter 19. So, Ebony is a pure blood. Both her parents are wizards. Why does she know so much about muggle culture? Two, Draco has blonde hair, not black hair. Three, apparition isn't possible in Hogwarts. Like, there's magic setup so you can't just pop in and out of rooms whenever you want to. Four, Dumbledore would never go to a rock concert as a poser. As a curious observer, maybe, but not a poser. Dumbledore is actually a pretty genuine person. Five, wait... How does Dumbledore know Draco has a surprise for Ebony? Six. Also, why is Hagrid there? He's not doing anything. And that's all I had for chapter 19. Let's move on to the next one. Chapter 20. Author's Note. I seed I donati cur what u fink. Stop. Puflamen, okay, prebs, one, fangs to raven, four, de help, one. Oh yeah, BTW, it'll be on vacation in Transylvania for the next three days, so do not expect updates. By the way, uh, whenever I say one, what that is, is, uh, the author trying to put down an exclamation point by hitting the one key, but forgetting to hit shift first. So that's what that is. All day, I wondered what the surprise was. Meanwhile, I put on a black leather mini, a black corset with purple lace stuff all over it, and gothic compact boots. MCR were gong to do the concert again. Since Volksimort had taken over the last one, I slit my wrists while I moshed to MCR in my bedroom all night, feeling excited. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door while I was trying on some black clothes and moshing to fang you for the venom. I got all mad and turned it off. But sacredly, I hopped inside that it was Draco, so we could do it again. What the fucking hell are you doing? I shouted angrily. It was Lupin. Are you gonna come... Are you gonna come rape me or what? I yelled. I was allowed to say that because Dumbledore had told us all to be careful around him and Snap. Since he was a pedo. No, actually. Get it? Hell. Can I pulls burrow some condemns? He growled angrily. Yeah, so you can... Yeah, so you can fuck your six-year-old girlfriend, huh? Oh, Jesus. I shouted sadistically. Fucker, he said, gong away. Well, anyway. Really, after that interaction, it's just well, anyway. Well, anyway, I put on some black eyeshadow, black eyeliner, and some black lipstick and white foundation. Then I went. Then I gasped. Snake and Lupin were in the middle of the empty hall doing it, and Dobby was watching one. Oh my god, you ludicrous idiot! They both shooted angrily when they saw me. Dobby ran away crying. They got up, though. Normally, I would have been turned on. I love seeing guys do it. 
but both of them were fucking preps. By the way, Snake is moved to Gryffindor now. What the fuck? Is that why you wanted condoms? I asked sadistically. See, I spelled that. Only you wouldn't give them to me, Lumpkin shouted angrily. Well, you shoulda told me, I replayed. Well, you shoulda told me, I replayed. Well, you shoulda- Sorry, bad joke on my part. You dimwit, Snake began to shoot angrily. And then I took out my black camera and took a pic of them. Who could see that they were naked and everything? Well, excuse me, they both shouted angrily. What was that all about? It was to blackmail Oo, I snarked. So now next time you see me doing it with my boyfriend, you can't fucking rat me out. Or, wait, had they ever seen her doing it with Draco b before? You can't fucking rat me out, or I'll show this to Dumbledork. So fuck off, you bastards. I started to run. They chased me, but I threw my wound at them, and they tripped over it. Well, anyway, I went outside, and there was Vampire, looking extremely fucking hot. What the fuck? Where'd Draco? I asked him. Oh, he's being a fucking bastard. He told me he wouldn't come. Spelled with three letters. Vampire said, shaking his head. Who want to come with me? To the concert. Again, come is spelled with three letters. Then he showed me his flying car. I gasped. It was a black car. He said his dog father... Sirius Black had given it to him. The license plate on the front said MCR666 on it. The one on the back said Inobi on it. I gasped. We flew to the concert hall. MCR were there, playing. Vampire and I began to make out, moshing to the music. I gasped. Looking at the band, I almost had an orgasm. Gerard was so fucking hot. He began to sing Helena, and his sexa beautiful voice began to fill the hall. And then I heard some crying. I turned and saw Draco crying in a corner. Ten things. For chapter 20, this isn't a note, but when I first heard this, when I was listening to adaptations for the first time, I quite literally almost died. I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard. So let's get into it. One, wait a minute. Lupin is still at the school? Why? You said he's a pedophile. You mentioned later that Dumbledore knows he's a pedophile. For fuck's sake, I've seen better staff accountability on the goddamn Penn State football team. Two. Again, canonical error. Lupin isn't a pedophile. Lupin is one of the good guys in the story. I have no idea why Tara is portraying him this way. I think that she just saw, just glanced at the characters and saw that he was a werewolf, and just immediately assumed, oh, he must be evil, so. Three. You said Snape and Lupin were pedophiles. People who are attracted to children. Now they're suddenly fucking each other in the middle of the hall? Four. Why? Why are these two fucking? Why are they in the middle of the hall? Why is Dobby watching? This makes no sense. Brain and brain. What is brain? Ugh. <sighs> Five. Snape would never fit into Gryffindor. He's... The head of Slytherin. Again, Slytherins are preps. Like, they're the rich kids. They're the elites. They're the ones who think that they're better than everybody. Gryffindors are just brave and noble. Like, I, I hardly see bravery as a bad thing. Six, you threw your wand at them and they tripped over it. Wands are pretty small, and also, why would you just leave behind your wand? 
That's how wizards tap into the magic around them. Without it, they're basically defenseless. Six, another fucking concert. Sorry, this is seven, whatever. Another concert? Like, I get it. Voldemort took over the last one, but if, if like, if, if, say, ISIS, or, I don't know, the IRA, or FARC dissidents in Colombia took over a rock concert to, like, ambush a group of, I don't know, government agents or something, I'm pretty sure the band that, whose concert they took over would be a little hesitant about coming back, don't you think? Eight. This has to be a troll. Sirius is Harry's godfather, and, fun fact, he has the ability to turn himself into a dog, yet he's referred to as Harry's dog father. So, I'm starting to think that whoever wrote this was a Harry Potter fan who was just tired of terrible fanfiction and decided to write a parody of it. I mean, we, we won't know for sure until somebody comes forward and, say, and says, Hey, I wrote this abomination, here's the proof. But that's the theory that I'm leaning towards. Nine. Harry doesn't have a flying car. The only people in the Harry Potter universe that we see using flying cars are the Weasleys. And they lost their flying car all the way in book two. Ten. Of course Draco is crying. You're making out with the dude who broke his heart and cheated on him. He's your boyfriend, you bitch. Oh boy, I rambled for quite a bit there, didn't I? Well, the good news is we only have one more chapter to go. Yay! Chapter 21 Arthur's Note Fuck ooh, okay? Ooh, fucking suck! It's not my fault if it's spilled wrong, okay? Cause that bish raven, cause it fuck all prabs one. Whoops, saws raven, fangs for the help. By the way, Transylvania rocks her ad. I even got to go to the castle where Dr. Cola was filmed. Later. We all went in the skull. Draco was crying in the common room. You waited until you got to the common room to talk to him? God, you're a bitch. Draco, are you okay? I asked- oh, sorry, no. Draco, are you okay? I asked in a gothic voice. No, I'm not, oo fucking bitch! He shouted angrily. He started to run out of the place in a suicidal way. I started to cry because I was afraid he would commit suicide. Again. He committed suicide earlier and suddenly came back to life. He's done it before, Ebony. He'll, he'll come back to life. Don't worry. It's okay, Anobi, said Vampire comfortably. It'll make him feel better. You mean you'll go... Fuck him, won't you? I shouted angrily. Then I ran to get Draco. Vampire came too. Draco, please come. He began to cry. Tears of blood came down his pale face. Spelled like a bucket. Pale. Pale. I was so turned on. Cause I love sensitive bi guys. If or a homophone... Dan, fuck off! And then, we heard some footsteps. Vampire got out his black invincibility coke. We both got under it. We saw the janitor, Mr. Norris, there, shouting angrily with a flashlight in his hands. Who's there? He shouted angrily. We saw filth come. He went under the invincibility clock and started to meow loudly. Is anyone there? yelled Mr. Norris. No, fuck you, you preppy little poser son of a fucking bitch, Vampire said under his breast in a disgusted way. Excuse me, excuse me, who said that? 
yelled Mr. Norris. Then he heard Filch meow. Meow! Filth, is there anyone under the cloak? he asked. Filth nodded, and then Vampire Frenched me. He did it just as Mr. Monsieur Norris was taken off the cloak once. What the? he yelled, but it was too late, cause now we were ruining away from him, and then we saw Draco crying and busting into tears and slitting his wrists outside of the school. Draco, I cried, are you okay? I guess, though, Draco weeped. We went back to our coffins, Frenching each other. Draco and I decided to watch Lake Placid. See? Isn't that depressing? On the gothic red bed together. As I was about to put in the video, my eyes rolled up, and suddenly I had a vision of something that was happening now. There was a Canuck on the door, and fog, and a mystery of magic walked into the school. One. So, that happened. Eight notes. One, of course Draco's not okay. He saw you cheating on him. Two, how does someone run out in a suicidal way? Three, you've said some pretty homophobic things yourself, Tara. How about you fuck off? Four, black invincibility cloak? Do you mean his invisibility cloak? How can an, how can an invisibility cloak be black? Five, also, why are they hiding? It's the middle of broad daylight. Like, Hogwarts students are given pretty much free reign to the castle during the day. It's just at night they're supposed to be in their common rooms. Six. Argus Filch is Hogwarts caretaker. His cat is named Mrs. Norris. Yet here, Tara seems to have mixed up the two, referring to... Argus Filch as Mr. Norris, and the cat as Filch. Which makes me wonder, again, if this is just a Harry Potter fan who's deliberately trying to make the worst possible fanfiction. In fact, that's that's what I'm really starting to lean towards, and I think there's going to be a lot more evidence later in the story to point towards that. Seven. Wait. Mr. Norris can see the cloak? How are they invisible? And if Filch the cat is nodding... How can he see him if he's under the cloak? Eight, his name is Cornelius Fudge, not Fug, and it's the mystery, sorry, it's the menace, you got me doing it now, Tara, god damn you. Uh, it's the mis ministry of magic, not the mystery of magic. Uh, as you can see, this uh, fanfiction is so bad that it's slowly whittling away at my, uh, vocabulary. It's, it is, uh, double plus ungood. Very double plus ungood indeed. All right. Um, well, that's going to do it for me today, guys. Um, if you, uh, really enjoyed it, please leave a like and a comment. And if you really enjoyed, and I mean really enjoyed, uh, feel free to subscribe. I plan on continuing this project all the way to chapter 44, which is the final pro which is the uh, final chapter of this story. And after that, I don't really know what I'm gonna do. Uh, maybe I'll try out some original content. I'm not sure. Maybe this is the only thing I'm gonna do. All I know is that currently I have a lot of time on my hands and don't really know what to do with it. So, yeah, stick around. Uh. More content to come. On the next episode of My Immortal, Albert Dumbledore is diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and Tara miraculously spells Alzheimer's correctly. Like, seriously. That's 
Really impressive, considering what we've read so far. And yet another Dark Lord, Darth Valor, makes his first appearance. Yes, you heard that right. Darth fucking Valor. Not Darth Vader, Darth Valor makes an appearance. If you want to continue to listen to this diabolical tome of madness, then tune in next time on My Immortal.